lazy or whatever i am a lazy natural i'm just go ahead and let y'all know right now that i am a lazy natural so <laughs> i'd be tired and i don't Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Wookie Mook. For those of you who are new here, I want to say first shout out to all of my new subscribers. I want to say thank you to all my supporters. Thank you for everybody that's been tuning in to your girl. Come checking out my channel. Um, so I've been doing a lot of lazy like recording lately. I haven't done a video like this in like over two months <laughs> and it's a little cold here. I don't know what's going on with the weather. I don't know if y'all can see it, but it's like real dim outside, um, real dull outside. Um, I have about a month left here in Washington. And so all of my stuff is like kind of packed up. Um, so I'm doing this video right now in like my um, den area, I guess you could say. My living room is, has all my like bins and all my boxes and stuff in it. So. And I didn't really want to like do this video in the bathroom because I thought it was going to be weird to like sit in the bathroom and record. <laughs> I don't know, like on the actual chair. So yeah, I'm sitting on the, um, one of my like uh, chairs that goes to like my countertop. So I don't know, but I've been doing a lot of lazy editing or not lazy editing, but a lot of lazy recording lately. Um, I haven't been feeling like really getting on camera and talking. But I know all you guys this video, so I'm going to talk about today. We're going to be getting into the moisture tips, um, tips on growing your hair and strengthening your hair. Many of you have noticed that I've been posting a lot of like the short videos where we've been like, I've been giving you like the tips and the tricks and things like that in word format, which is great because like I said, I haven't been really in the mood to like get on camera and talk. But I know I owe y'all this video, so we're gonna get into it today. Let's get it, let's get it, let's get it, let's go. I don't know my camera, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what's going on here. Um, but yes, yeah, so if y'all see this blanket or whatever, you girl, there's a little cold. Um, but yeah, so I switched spots a little bit. Um, I have been trying to figure out background and things like that. Um, I think probably I'm just gonna have to like decorate my walls when I get to my new place. Like I said, I got a few weeks here left in Washington, so uh, all my stuff has been packed up. Um, but anyways, if you watch my other videos, then you already know the status of like me moving out and um, getting out the name and stuff like that. So we're not gonna talk about editing the video. We just gonna probably edit that. Uh, so I'm gonna be sharing my strengthening tips with you guys, growth and moisture tips. So I gave you my top ten on Instagram. The first one we talked about was cleansing your scalp the correct way. So um, when cleansing your hair, when washing your hair, things like that, shampoo is for your scalp, literally. You want to part your scalp, um, part your hair down in four sections. I typically do four sections in my hair because my hair is a lot thicker and a little bit longer. People who have like maybe shorter hair, you might want to do it in like maybe more sections. But to me, parting it down in the middle, one big part in the middle and then across, and then that gives you four sections to work with. Um, you want to start out with combing your hair from the outside. You start out here getting out any knots or any tangles at the end and then working your way up. And then once you get a good chunk of that, then you can start combing it out from the roots. That way you have less hair shedding, you have less hair breakage, um, and it helps you with low manipulation so that you don't be pulling and tugging on your hair so much. So the first things first is the cleansing process is very, very important. The way you cleanse your hair is very important. Don't be out here doing twist outs. Don't be out here getting braids. Don't be out here getting in, in uh, what's it called? Weaves and wigs on dirty hair, y'all, because that's disgusting. That's dirty. And it's just not proper maintenance, not proper hygiene. You want to make sure that you are cleansing your hair properly. So again, you start out wet your hair. Drench your hair with water, part it in sections, squeeze out the excess water, have you feel. And then you want to take a little bit of your shampoo, apply it throughout your scalp. Rub your scalp, get it in there real good, whatever, whatever. And at this time, your hair should still be in sections. I usually use hair clamps to hold my hair um, so that I can have actually be able to see my scalp. I am going to do a video for you guys uh, so you guys can see the breakdown. But... That's the only way that you're going to be able to really get the hair, like to get your scalp and not get your hair. 
Now, of course, when shampooing, shampooing your hair, there's you probably you are not probably you're gonna get a lot of the excess shampoo onto your regular hair, and that's fine. The only purpose of basically when I say that shampoo is for the scalp, you literally just want to make sure that when you're taking the shampoo out of the bottle or the bucket, whatever you decide to use, you want to ensure that you're directly applying it to your scalp, to the outside edges, to the back of your hair, basically wherever you use like gels and things like that, because that's where the product residue really does build up. And then as you wash your hair, rinse it through with water, you want to let the, the shampoo run through your hair in that way. You know, and it kind of just, as you rinse it, all of the impurities will just flush away, okay? But yeah, so making sure that your shampoo um, is going a, directly to your scalp and not to your hair. Like you, like I say, you still can apply the shampoo in the front of your hair, thing like that. But the whole purpose I'm trying to get you guys to understand is that shampoo is for cleansing your scalp. You need to have a clean scalp. Essentially, having natural hair is basically like having new growth, right? So imagine all of this is just new growth. The better you clean your hair, the easier it is for your hair follicles to create new hair and new growth into a fresh, clean spot, right? The second thing is when shampooing is that you need to go in with a conditioner always, not just for your weeks that you have to um, use a hair mask. I typically alternate when I'm doing my, my wash days or shampoo days or whatever. I typically break my schedule down. So one week I'll do like moisture retention or, um, or hair growth. Basically any, any products that uses, uh, that specializes in, um, moisturizing your hair that specializes in hair growth. Um, Anything that says, like, you know, um, I got to look at my products. I'm trying to think of the words I want to say. But basically, I split up. So I do one week where I focus on basically, like, moisturizing and really retaining moisture in my hair. And then the second week when I wash my hair, I focus on anything that's going to basically do uh, strengthening my hair. So anything that says, like, hair mask, hair strengthening, hair... Um, hair breakage, uh, um, words of that nature is going to be used for like strengthening your hair. Anything that says protein in it is going to be used for strengthening your hair. Um, so yeah, I typically alternate between shampoo and conditioning. So I shampoo one week, I condition the next week, and I kind of do it that way. Conditioner, once you rinse out your shampoo, um, you go in with your conditioner. Now, some people use three steps. They use a shampoo. They use a conditioner and then a deep conditioner or a hair mask. I typically, depending on how I'm feeling, I'm not going to lie. Like lately, I've been extremely exhausted. So um, it just depends on what you do. But I recommend as long as you do a shampoo and condition, you should be fine. But just keep in mind that hair mask gives you that extra uh oomph, if that makes sense like whether you're doing your week where you're doing your moisture or you're strengthening hair mask or curate basically to leave on your hair for 10 to 15 minutes some people do 20 minutes i sometimes leave my hair mask overnight if i'm feeling like lazy or whatever i am a lazy natural i'm just go ahead and let y'all know right now that i am a lazy natural so <laughs> i be tired and i know how many of y'all feel the same way i feel but i just be tired like typically my day start at 4 a.m even on my weekends and my days off, I typically, like, I can't sleep past 6 o'clock some days. So I'm up at 5, 6 a.m. in the morning with nothing really that I have to do. And then I'm up all day long, you know. So I be tired, y'all. I am a la lazy natural. Like, I, mm, mm, mm. Um, <laughs> So, yeah. Whenever you use a, a, a deep conditioner or a hair mask, you usually let it sit 10 to 15 minutes, sometimes 20 minutes. Usually most of the products will tell you the maximum time on it. It'll give you the directions of how long to let it sit. Um, you can do your shampoo condition and deep condition in the shower before you take a shower, put your shower cap on and let it sit while you're showering and then wash it out at the end. Or you can do it outside of the shower, whatever. I just recommend that whenever you do your hair mask to allow the time to, of at least 10 to 15 minutes to let it sit, you know, kind of let it do its thing um to let the nutrients kick in from the product and then make sure you cover it whether it's with a shower cap or plastic cap or even you know if you want a budget or whatever 
get you a little shower um a little shopping bag from the grocery store you know the little re uh reusable plastic bags uh, you know from walmart Publix. um i don't know where y'all shop but the grocery store bags basically you can always use one of those to cover your hair but just ensuring basically that you're properly cleansing your scalp is the number one important thing when wanting to see your hair grow and wanting to see hair retention or you know um strengthen um the next thing i gotta grab my list <laughs> oh my god Ugh. this is gonna be a long video y'all this is really gonna be a long, a long video because i don't know what has come over me but i am tired like i literally want to take a nap right now but i can't because if i take a nap it's already two o'clock in the afternoon i'm not gonna get this video out so i gotta get this video out for y'all but i am tired i am sleepy okay so i'm mumbling a little bit trying to get myself together but yeah and like i said there's no sun out right now in washington and literally it's like raining now mind you it's supposed to be like our summer time here in the in a, a week but this is what i'm saying when i was telling y'all in my video that i be really suffering from like environmental depression for real because it's really like that out here like you guys i don't think you understand like literally it'll be sunny one day and then rainy the next day and when you're like during the daytime out here it's different from the states like the sun is not out so basically all day long it's like low energy outside and it's rainy and it's cold and it's freezing cold i don't have the ac on in fact I okay so if you're old enough when this movie came out twilight series basically this is where i live out here in seattle so if you remember how gloomy and dark this show was or this movie um this movie series was basically imagine that's kind of how it is where i live close to um the island not near seattle necessarily because seattle i feel like the sun comes out a lot more um but close to like the island near like bellevue burlington um uh, Marysville, Everett, um, all those towns and stuff, basically, it is, like, really depressing. I think I have, like, the little heat thing on. It's cold. It's freezing cold in here. All the windows are closed. Everything is closed. It's freezing cold inside. And it makes you just want to sleep. And then, like, mind you, out here, when it gets dark, it's pitch black. So that's basically, like, no sun for days and days and days until the sun finally comes out. So it's just annoying. And it makes me tired and sleepy and drowsy and <sighs> anyway so like i said um con shampooing and conditioning is important i had to grab my list because <laughs> my mind is like all over the place right now because i'm tired okay so the second thing is once you're done with your shampoo and your condition and things like that you want to go in with your lock method now this you need to do on damp hair now you can do the lock method on dry hair, but I highly recommend doing it on damp hair because it just looks better. Water, the water helps lock the moisture in more and it gives you extra slip so that way you can really work the product for your hair. Um, so the moisture method or the lock method is basically making sure that you use a leave-in conditioner, a oil, and a curl cream when doing your hair so basically after you have washed out your shampoo your conditioner your deep conditioner you want to go in with a leave-in conditioner make sure you do this like you make sure that your hair is like you can towel dry your hair that's fine um i sometimes use a microsoft towel to kind of like get out the excess water or whatever uh the little dampness and just make it like you know or the like the extra excess water and just keep it damp um I am going to be doing my products of what I use on my hair for you guys so you can understand the difference between moisture and conditioning, what products to use and what's not to use, what is a leave-in conditioner and what is a regular conditioner. Um, but yeah, the lock method basically helps you layer your hair and makes you, you're able to basically um, lock the moisture in and that's why it's called the lock well that's kind of why it's called the lock method the other reason why it's called the lock method is because you use a leave-in an oil and like i said a curl cream right or a cream so basically l for leave-in o for oil c for cream or curl cream whatever you want to use um 
Step three, the next thing is, as I talked about in my short video, is you want to try to make sure that you're being um, mindful of checking your ends. A lot of times when your hair is shedding a lot, like a lot, like a, like a lot, a lot, a lot, like a lot, 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 a lot. But you, when your hair is doing like excessive shedding and you're like, I'm taking care, but I'm shampooing it, I'm conditioning, I'm covering it up. Sometimes that means that you need to cut your ends. If you notice, like I, I'll show you guys how to, to detect um, your ends being like crusty or thinning or whatever split is. I'll show you how to detect that too. But yeah, you want to just be mindful of that. Um, typically, I say you should be like cutting your ends every like three to six months. Um, so don't be out here cutting your hair every month. Don't be out here cutting it every week because that's excessive and you don't need that. Anywhere between three to six months or one to two times a year is a good time, a good way to measure out how many times you need to cut your ends. The next thing is protecting your hair. So you want to use a double layer bonnet or a silk scarf, a thick silk scarf or a silk do-rag um, before any time you go to sleep, anytime. Sometimes when I'm driving in the car, like when I'm, I'm going outside, and I know that I, like, I can go somewhere where I can have my head covered. I'll typically wear a do-rag sometimes just to cover my hair from the sun. I have leather seats inside my car, but some people who have like, what is it, the other polyester, whatever that other material is in the car, sometimes that material too, your hair can get caught on the back of it and it can cause your hair to dry also or get snatched. So um, I typically use, like I said, a do-rag sometimes throughout the day because of that. I try not to go nowhere in my bunny because that's ghetto. But yeah, anytime you're laying down, anytime your hair is going to be touching the surface, I highly recommend to have it covered. Um, heat damaging is a thing. The sun, depending on what the state that you're in, granted, where I am, it really ain't no sun all the time. It's actually raining, so that kind of helps with moisture in my hair. But, like, when I go back to Florida, for example, the heat is hot, and the heat be heating, okay? So, um, if I don't have no moisture in my hair, my hair is not styled, it's not protective style, like I said, I will wear a do-rag because the heat, like, just that, it's like constant hot on your hair. It's just not good for you. Um, especially with color hair. So I cut out my color in my hair, not because my hair was damaged or nothing, but because it was just time. I had, had my hair was blonde for like, I think over, or honey blonde for over a year and a half. And my hair had grown out. So like basically it was like black at the roots, all black. And then the ends was, was blonde. And there was a lot of blonde still left in fact. Sometimes I like see little pieces of like brown in my hair and I can tell that like I still have a little bit left to cut out. But like colored hair is not bad. Coloring your hair, dyeing your hair gives you a little oomph, you know, it makes you feel a little vibrant. But um, you have to be careful with coloring your hair. Like me, I had taken care of my hair for years, so I was okay. I was comfortable with it. Um, typically, I don't do any color myself unless it's like the as I am colors, the, like the... the the temporary paint and stuff like that other than that i don't use any chemical color any of that i don't do none of that stuff at home on my own hair because that's how you damage your hair go to professional go to a salon you know and invest if you really want to have colored hair invest i recommend to go to a salon and let them do it because that way your hair can be healthy and they can use the right products color safe products color safe products is very very important not every shampoo is made for colored hair not every conditioning or every conditioner is made for colored hair. Not every spray, not every gel is made for colored hair. That's why it's important for you to go to a professional when coloring your coloring or dyeing your hair, because that way you know that they're using color safe products. Most of them usually have professional products that are curated for colored or dyed hair. Um, obviously, coloring and dye your hair is a chemical process. Chemicals do break down your hair. Hence, you are natural. Being This is natural. This is your hair from the roots, okay? Unprocessed hair is what basically being natural is, right? So adding chemicals to unprocessed hair clearly breaks down the hair and, you know, makes it unnatural. That makes sense? Okay. So, yeah. Um... It can cause your hair to be dry. Like when I noticed like my first, like I think maybe two months of like me having that, that my hair dyed blonde or whatever, it was just very like straight and brittle. Um, it started to really dry out. And again, like I told you guys, I'm a lazy natural since I've been out here. So sometimes I would discover my hair would be like 
falling out a little bit more than what it was supposed to be, shedding a little bit more than what it was supposed to be. My curl pattern changed. It was still cute. Don't get me wrong. It was real, real cute. But I just feel like with Without colored hair, which is my natural black hair, or whatever, my hair curls up a lot more. It's a lot healthier. It's a lot shinier versus like when I had my like honey blonde hair, my hair was very like dry and dull. And like I said, the texture, you could feel it. It just felt very brittle. Um, so yeah, just be mindful of color and dye your hair. If your hair is already colored and dyed, you can also look up and research colors. Um, color safe products. I recommend Ulta. Shopping and looking on Ulta. Amazon is also another good one. And just type in color safe products or like, you know, shampoos and conditioners for dyed hair. Um, because basically you can bring your hair back to life. You can revive it, renew it, restore it. That is a thing. Um, which brings me to my next tip about strengthening and um, Protective styles. So a lot of us girls, a lot of us guys, we use a lot of protective styles. What is a protective style? A protective style is basically when you do two strand twists, braids on your hair. A lot of the guys get braids um, on their natural hair, on their regular hair, you know, adding extensions, adding weaves, covering your hair up with weaves and, and sew ins and things like that. All of those things are considered protective styles. OK, now protective styles are a good thing for you. But when you do them improperly, you don't take care of your hair underneath, then they can become your enemy, not your friend, okay? So what does that mean, basically? Um, it means that when you are, when you have your braids in or your rope twists or your locks or whatever, that is a process of covering up your hair, your natural hair. It goes on top or goes in between, however, which is a great thing because you talked about the sun, right? Protecting your hair from the sun and direct heat, which is a great thing. Covering your hair helps it grow, helps to keep them that those nutrients locked in, right? But if you don't moisturize your hair before you get the your your um protective styles, then basically you spend months and months of your hair being just dry, and then it becomes matted, it becomes mildewy, and it starts to like break. Also, people that spend I know weaves is a lot, and I know nowadays people charge you two, three hundred dollars for braids and for, you know, I get it, I get it, sis, I get it, but you cannot go more than two months with a protective style. Hear me when I say this: do not go more than two months with a protective style. Maybe even a month and a half. I know it costs a lot. Do not be out here wearing weaves for three months, y'all. Please don't do it. Because I'm telling you, you will ruin your hair, you will damage your hair, you will break your hair. You ever discover when you're taking out your weaves, you have a lot of shedding, your hair is brittle? Yeah, so that just depends on how well you take care of it before. I am going to do a video the next time I get weaves so I can show you guys my takedown process and show you guys how to properly take your hair out and how to properly moisturize before you shampoo your hair to, to clean it. Because, of course, you had that hair in for months and months and months. I know you're going to want to go in and want to wash it or whatever. It's going to be stinky. It's going to be smelly, all of that stuff. I get it, sis. But just make sure that you are taking care of your hair underneath. That's all. That's all I'm saying. So when you have a wig, if, it, if you have a wig that you can apply yourself or you do your wig yourself, then when you go home and you take your wig off at night, just make sure you're adding a little oil to your scalp on a, on once a week basis. That's all you need. You don't need to do over moisturizing once a week. Add you some oil in your scalp. And then I usually keep a spray bottle with water, um, leave-in conditioner, and oil in it. And basically... Um, I spread it over my hair to give my hair a little, mm, you know, you can do that with braided hair. You can do that with locks and things like that. Now, some people who have curly hair like myself, I typically try not to do it when I first get my, my protective styles because my hair curls up or it starts to slip and then it makes the protective style look old. So typically if you had your protective style in, specifically with braids and locks, if you've had your braids and your locks in for a month, then you need to go in after a month and spray your hair down, get you some, you know, like I said, leave-in conditioner water, put you in a spray bottle, shake it up real good, and just get into your scalp. You don't need to use a lot, just a few things, rub it in your hair, let it breathe or whatever. You can also use a dry shampoo or dry shampoo or um, some people use mousse. 
like but the mousse that's curated for natural hair. Um, I have to show y'all all of this stuff. A reason why I'm not showing my products and stuff is because I really need to restock my stash. So I don't want to do a product thing without restocking my stash. I can fully show you guys everything that I do have. Um, but yeah, just make sure that you, like I said, you guys are properly cleansing your scalp, properly taking care of your hair. If you wear a wig and it's, and you can take it off. I recommend highly once a week, taking it off, oiling your scalp, spraying your hair a little bit, letting it air dry and put your wig back on. Okay. Do not, 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 do not keep your weeds and your wigs for more than two to three months. Anytime you take your hair out, please make sure that you are properly shampooing your scalp, properly conditioning your hair, especially after you take your braids out and after you take down weeds. I highly recommend going in with a strengthening hair mask deep conditioner. Most hair masks that are made for strengthening will have avocado in them. Some of them may have aloe in them. Most of them may have like eggs or hair mayo. Um, anything that says like revive your hair, re-strengthen your hair, um, renew your hair, restore your hair. Those things are basically for strengthening your hair. Anything that says brittle or broken hair, use it after you take down a protective style. And I mean like when you take that out your braids, the weeds, anything that basically you haven't touched your hair in for a month or a month and a half or two months, I recommend using a strengthening mask after that. Before you get your hair done, I recommend using a moisture mask before that. That's just basically anything that um, says uh, apply moisture or um, hair growth. Those things usually are curated to moisturizing your hair. So we talked a little bit about, about avoiding heat. So I'm going to have to add this back to that section. I'll edit it later. Um, which brings me to my next point. Heat damaging. Flat irons, blow dryers, um, um, blow drying combs. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Um, roller, electronic rollers and things like that. Okay, you guys. So remember how we talked about being natural, right? and adding chemicals so when you use heat even though heat isn't a chemical heat causes a chemical reaction or chemical process it's basically a chemical process that's being transformed right so if you need to use a blow dryer if you don't want to let your hair air dry which i again i recommend letting your hair dry air dry just let it breathe stretch shake it let it go breathe stretch shake it let it go because you can style your natural hair and again you can use hair products on your natural hair while it's dry you can do that all you need is a little spray bottle with some water and to dampen it but if you need to use a blow dryer sometimes when i am being lazy and i want my hair to dry quick i get it you make sure that you use the blow dryer at a distance from your hair don't directly hold it close to your hair put it on low heat and make sure that you're only blow drying the, the the insides of the hair you know up close just to get your roots dry and then like i said use it at an angle or like a, a, a length away from you ensure that you guys are not blow drying your hair if you have to blow dry it follow that process but if you can try to avoid blow drying your hair try to avoid flat dyeing your hair so most people usually do like soup press and most people like straighten their hair, flat iron their hair in the winter time because granted, again, there's no sun out. The sun does damage your hair, you know? So it's a perfect time to let your hair down a little bit, let it breathe, you know, let the coolness take it over. So if you need to straighten your hair with a hot comb or flat iron, whatever, I recommend doing those things during the winter time. So that way you can avoid adding extra heat to it you know what I'm saying with the sun um which brings me to my next point do not over moisturize I repeat do not over moisturize you should be doing your hair once a week if you're wearing your natural hair out you should be doing it once a week you don't need to do it every day you don't need to be putting leave-in conditioner every day you shouldn't be shampooing your, your hair every day you only should be typically shampooing your hair one to two times a month that's one week this, one week that, every two weeks. You can follow that process if you need to. I've seen people take so much hair products and put it in their hair. Because why are you using that much hair product? Why? 
digging your whole hand in and pulling out gel is crazy. And now you got gel coming down your arm. No, you only need a little bit. Less is more. Only a little bit. Typically work in between the tips of your fingers. Get your tips of your fingers is all you need. And then you'll use the praying hand method to slide any hair product down to the ends. Please do not over moisturize, you guys. Please don't over moisturize. Please don't over moisturize. Please don't over moisturize. Do not over moisturize because that will damage your hair. Your hair will be too oily. It will be just just don't do it. <laughs> like, I don't know if you guys ever touched your hair and you just like you can feel the grease in the, the product. Your hair should not feel like that. Once you do your, your products in your hair and after you let it dry a day or two then you should feel it should feel regular you know it shouldn't feel like heavy you should be able to shake it and it should be able to move very lightweight that's how your natural hair should be it should feel free not heavy not like a wet rag like don't over moisturize because again you will over damage your hair and basically what happens when you over moisturize is you put you clog up your pores in your hair you clog up your pores in your scalp and then now your scalp has too much product and it can't breathe you know, it's like calling up a sink. So don't over moisturize. Like I said, one to two times a month, shampoo, two to three. If you want to do your shampoo and then do your uh, leave-in conditioner, your products once a week. Um, okay. Which brings me to my next point. Do not product build up either. So product buildup is like basically, you know how you have, you see those people that have like crusty hair. I'm guilty of this too. So basically, when you've done the leave-in conditioner oil curl cream, sometimes curl creams are really, really heavy. And that's the reason why you use them a part of the lock method because they can be good for moisturizing your hair or locking in like, you know, nutrients in your hair. But you have to be careful when you're applying gels. So some people will apply the lock method and then turn around and apply a gel on top of the hair, then turn around and apply edge control. You got to decide which products you want to use. You can't use gel in in edge control if you're gonna use edge control use edge control on your edges okay on your edges honey not in your hair okay because then that like i said you start to um layer products and then now you have all this white residue building up in your scalp so don't do that let your hair be free like just let it be free i know a lot of people don't like the way their natural hair looks a lot of people don't like the natural hair look, even though we're in 2020, what, four, and natural hair is becoming more and more acceptable, and it's so beautiful, it really is. Some people don't like it. I get it. Some people feel like they look bald head, or they feel like they look like a poodle. Sometimes I feel like I look like a rag or a poodle, but let your hair breathe. If you can't do it outside your place or your home, then I recommend at least doing it while you're inside you know before you go to bed like i said get you a double layer bonnet let your hair breathe and put the bonnet on walking around in your home let your hair breathe um style it style it cute you know add some barrettes or add some hair jewelry add some beads you know just keep it real cute add a scarf wear a scarf around it you know um just let it breathe you guys like the wigs is cute the wigs is cute Cause baby, I'm about tired of this. Trust me, I get it. I'm gonna go get me some weed when I get to Florida, okay? But you still have to let your hair breathe. Like, I don't really know how to explain it. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but the science behind it. But just imagine, like, let's imagine, let's go back to using the clock sink. Like, you know, you don't wanna just keep piling, 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 piling stuff up and just put in the a sink plunger on it that's kind of what it's like you want to like release all that water drain it out let your hair breathe you know the air is good for your hair natural air is good for your hair um just letting it go out and getting the nutrients from the sun you know because even though the sun can be heat damaging you also can be a plant be a plant there we go be a plant photosynthesis is a thing be a plant, photosynthesis, not too much light, but not too little light, okay? So think about it that way. Photosynthesis, be a plant, sunlight, water, nutrients, boom. There we go. So my last two points that I'm going to wrap this video up is decreasing stress. 
obviously most of you know stress can cause breakouts it can cause your body to be weird your bowels to be weird your stomach to be irritated it can cause your hair to thin your hair to break so y'all lower your stress levels okay you know find a way to de-escalate the stress calm yourselves down and really you know combat your lifestyle hitting the gym taking a walk touching nature going outside putting your phone down you know um detaching from the worlds and detaching from drama and just really allowing yourself to flourish okay i want you guys to be like trees you know sway with the wind be like the sand under their toes be like the water in the sea just be free be soft be gentle with your hair think about it in that aspect you know don't be stressed out and if you are stressed out again find ways to de-stress because stress is the number one thing that will cause you to have hair breakage hair shredding and things like that drink water eat a balanced diet um it's it's not just something i'm making up it's so true like i typically do not eat fast food i try to stay away from fast food as much as i can mcdonald's wendy's taco bell um what else fast food places they have out there arby's checkers Riley's, whatever y'all call it um those places that food doesn't have any nutrients in it you are what you eat literally drink a lot of water drink a lot of water drink a lot of water be a plant be a plant drink a lot of water um yeah try to get you some fruits and vegetables in your diet green leaves you know not this is the green leafy greens that are good for your body it's good for your hair um aloe um green tea black tea uh again fruits and vegetables whole grains rice potatoes is a vegetable that's good for you you know you guys just make sure that you're mindful of what you what your diet is you are what you eat so you want long beautiful hair guys and girls boys and girls ladies and gentlemen you know, take care of yourself from the inside out and then also take care of yourself from the outside in obviously you're not gonna have long beautiful hair if you don't take care of it you're not gonna have healthy hair if you ruin it you know so that is all i have for y'all today i hope you guys enjoyed this video till next time I'll see y'all in the next video